بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد الكثير طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ويسدي باذن الله we took a hadith from our book Rawdatu al-Uqala wa Nuzhatu al-Fudala ibn Hibban al-Hafiz rahimahullahu ta'ala So what is that hadith we took yesterday? Man hafizah Who memorized it? Andak ya Umar Allah an Sahli ibn Sa'd radiyallahu anhu qad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna Allah yuhibbu ma'ari al-Ahlaq wa yikrahu sibsaqa إن الله يحب مكارم الأخلاق وفي رواية معالي الأمور يكره سفسافها من حفظ من حفظ الحديث you want to memorize this hadith memorizing the hadith every day is a very very good drill it has a lot of benefit to it when we were in the maj alhamdulillah بإذن الله we used to read the hadith every day for Sahih Muslim and also for Jamma Sahih, Lima Laysa for Sahihin, the Shaykh Muqtur Rahimahullah. And it helps you a lot, it has a lot of benefit in reading the hadith. Not just in memorizing the hadith, in strengthening your memory, but also for Nutq al Arabi, in speaking, and standing up, and helps you in the Khitabah, it helps you to be able to, to speak and to give a khutbah. Nah? And then the benefits in the hadith. There are hadith that I had. We memorize the hadith. The hadith just for the lesson. We will memorize it today and the next day we will forget it. And every day we memorize a new hadith. But it's still hadiths that I still remember just from getting up one time or two times and reading it in the class. And the meaning of the hadith stays. Uh-huh. Especially for the A'ajim, those who are not Arabs, it aids them in their pronunciation of Arabic. Every day getting up reading the hadith. It aids you, it aids you to overcome shyness of standing up before people and speaking out loud. And there's a lot of benefits in it. Well, yesterday we took this hadith, Inna Allah yuhibbu makarim al-akhlaq. Allah loves the honorable, upright conduct and behavior, and He hates the low and disgraceful behavior. Wa yakrahu safsafaha. Safsafaha, when Allah dislikes is the low behavior, the disgraceful behavior, that which in it is no morals and it's indecent. Naam. Yesterday we stopped at a statement from uh, uh, Sheikh Ibn Hibban, al Hafiz Ibn Hibban, and we want to proceed from there today. And that is his statement. Rahimahullah, Inna mahabbat al mar'i al makal min al akhlaq. وَكَرَاهِيَتَهُ سَفْسَافَهَا هُوَ نَفْسُ الْعَقْلِ The fact that a person loves the high standards of conduct and behavior, the fact that he loves مَكَارِمْ الْأَخْلَاقِ The fact that somebody loves the high standards of integrity and uprightness and honesty and honorable things, and also at the same time, he dislikes low behavior and low attributes. Na'am? Attributes and behavior and conduct that's immoral and is indecent. Na'am? The fact that he loves this and dislikes that, this is the sign of sound intellect. This is a sign of aql, sound intellect and intelligence. Na'am? And the more that we go, the more we're going to understand what is meant by this word aql naam and what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the believers calling them ulul albab ay ashabul uqul salima those who have sound understanding they are upon their natural disposition their intellect is still intact it has not been distorted it has not been changed or warped or affected so aql which this book is about. This book, the name of it is Rawdatul Uqala. The gardens of those have aql. The gardens of those have sound understanding. Naam. Al-aql is sound understanding. It is intelligence that the individual likes and he inclines to honorable character. He inclines to that. He likes that. 
Also, he desires for himself high standards, uprightness, integrity. He has standards that he strives for. He has things he doesn't go down and do. He doesn't stoop that low. He doesn't do certain things. He has standards. He has limitations. He has restrictions. Uh -huh. He desires this for his own self. He desires this for his own self. And he strives to implement it. It's not just something he sees in his heart. That this is halal. This is good. And this is haram. That's bad. But he just carries on as he wants. No, he deems it the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulated. And he strives for it. Uh -huh. And at the, same, at the same time, he dislikes low and shameful and disgraceful characteristics and attributes. He refrains from people, places, and things. Keep this in mind. He refrains from people, places, and things that are low. People that are low. Places that's not suitable, that's low. And things that you do that are low. People, places, and things that are low and disgraceful, he stays away from them. Things that incline to debasement and immorality and indecency. And this, brothers in Islam, this is what you call success. This is what you call prosperity. This is what you call contentment, that somebody is muqtana, indahu qana'a, that he's content and that he found satisfaction in the life of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book, Fi Surah Al Shams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Ahada ashara qasaman. Ahada ashara qasaman. Wa shamsi wa duaha. He swears by the sun and it's the, and the light that comes up. Wal qamri ida talaha. And he swears by the moon as it follows it. Wal nahari. Wal lady. He swears by the day. He swears by the night. He swears by 11 things. There's no chapter in the Quran like this. Allah swears by 11 things. Nah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears in the Quran, wal asr or wal duha, the swearing has three arkan. Al qasim laha thalatha aqsan. Thalatha arkan. Man ya'arifuha? Who knows them? Man ya'arif arkan al qasim. First, harf al qasim. Al wow. Wal asr. When we see that kasra, wal asri, we know that's a qasim. If somebody said, wallahi, and I'm not to Wallahi, I didn't do it. When he says, wallahi, we know that he's swearing. If he said, wallahu, it's not swearing. If he said, wallaha, no, that's not swearing. That wow has to be wow qasim. It's the wow for swearing. Then you have the muqsam bi or muqsam alay. Nah. -uh. He's swearing by Allah. Wallahi. Nahnu swear by Allah. Man kana halifan fal yahlif. Billah. Whoever's going to swear, he has to swear by Allah. We have to swear by Allah. We say, the Rabbil Ka'bah. I swear by the Lord of the Ka'bah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears by whatever he wishes to swear by. Allah says, wal asr. He swears by time. Allah says, swears by himself. Fala bu rabbika. He swears by himself. No, by your Lord. Uh -huh. Allah says, swears by the lady. What lady is a yabsha? Allah swears by the night. So the first thing, the three things of swearing is the letter. Wallah and wow. And then the thing that you're swearing by, then the thing that you're swearing over, what you're swearing for, and muqsam alay. Like I said, wallahi, I'm not going over there. I'm not going there. I mean, I'm swearing for this purpose. The purpose that Allah is swearing for. Allah says, Wal Asr. Wow, that's the, the letter for swearing. Asr is swearing by the time. What does he want to say? All of mankind is in loss, except those believe that good deeds. Allah is swearing to make this statement. For so here, in this chapter here, Allah makes Ahada Ashira Qasim, and he swears by 11 things. The last thing that he swears by is what? When that sin. وَمَا سَوَّاهَا And the soul and the mind of man وَعَلَيْكُمْ سَلَامٌ The soul and the mind of man وَمَا سَوَّاهَا أَيْ وَالَّذِي سَوَّاهَا هُوَ نَفْسُهُ هُوَ الَّذِي سَوَّاهَا He's the one that designed it and shaped it and formed it فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا He inspired it with that which is good for it and that which is harmful for it Meaning 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mind of man that righteousness and good deeds enhances his mind and his soul and his psyche. He made him like that. And Allah made the soul of man that sins and disobedience harms him and corrupts him. Allah made the soul just like that. Just the way he made your digestive system, that you eat food and your body benefits from it and you leave yourself. Just the same way that he made your respiratory system, that you breathe in oxygen and you put out carbon monoxide and it benefits your brain. Just the same way that he made your nervous system. Just the same way that he made your reproductive system. He made your soul in this manner. That righteousness benefits it. And sins harm it. You can say, no, I, I like this, I like that, but it's not like that. Naam. قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثَرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ It's not the same. The khabith, that which is repulsive, and that which is filthy, وَالطَّيِّبُ And that which is wholesome and good. وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثَرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Even if you like a lot of filth, it's still not the same. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا Who's going to finish the ayah? فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So fear Allah, O oh you who have sound understanding so that you may be successful. قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ It is not the same. The khabith, that which is repulsive, ugly, filthy, dirty, وَالطَّيِّبُ And that which is wholesome and good. Naam and tayyib, that which is tayyib and good. Walau a'jabaka kathratul khabith. Even if you love a lot of filth, not if, if you just love filth, even if you indulge in it a lot and you love it, it's still not the same. It's still not good. So Allah says, What? Fattakullah. Ya ulil albab. So fear Allah, all of you who have intelligence. So that you may be successful. So intelligence is obedience to Allah. Using what you have from knowledge and embarking and advancing toward that which is beneficial. Not just that, and staying away from that which is harmful and that which harms you. This is why in the hadith what we read, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Allah loves the highness and honorable characters and He hates. Safsafahab, the low in it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after swearing by 11 things, He says, wa nafsin wa ma sawaha, and the nafs, and, and, and He swears by the nafs, and He swears by the one who fashioned it, and by Himself, swearing by Himself. فَأَلْهَمَهَا fujuraha, He inspired it and let it know that which harms it, wa taqwaha, and that which benefits it. Allah made the soul that fujur in sins harms it. Naam. Just like if you ate some spoiled food, it's going to harm your stomach. And if you ate something good in nourishment, it's going to enrich you. And if you ate something that's poisonous, it's going to harm you. We have something that's called food poisoning. Some foods harm you. Some foods better. Allah made your digestive system like that. But now you have a spiritual system. You have a mind. Naam. Allah made it a particular way. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا هذا خلاصة الأمر He's successful, the one who purifies the soul. The thing that Allah swore about. This, all these things that Allah swore about, هذا المقسم عليه This is why Allah swore to mention this statement right here. Like Allah says, وَالْعَصَرِ He swears by the Asr to say what? إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْ All of mankind is in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. Allah makes in this verse 11 qasm, swears by 11 things to make what statement? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّى He's successful, the one who honors his mind and his psyche and he protects it, he purifies it, he strives for the best things. وَقَدْ خَابَ He's destroyed. مَنْ دَسَّاهَ The one who covers himself with disobedience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this matter clear. He's successful the one who purifies his mind and protects his mind by, from which that which pollutes the mind and that which poisons one's mind. People poison one's mind with the things they indulge in, the things they do, the things they listen to, the things they look at, all kinds of actions. 
And they protect their minds by staying away from certain things and embarking upon goodness. And he destroys his mind. Dasa means that he covers it. He covers the cleanliness of himself with filth. Some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, naturally Allah makes people shy. Some people cover their shyness with what? With shamelessness. They're not embarrassed to do anything. They were actually once, once upon a time, they were shy. Certain things they couldn't even say. Certain things they probably couldn't even look at. Certain actions they couldn't even do. But they cover their shyness with what? With shame. With shamelessness. They cover their honesty. They were what? Honest. And they were truthful. They cover it with tricks. And games. And ghish. And khida. They cover the goodness that they have. This is their soul. They cover it with these things. Allah made the soul on a natural disposition. Allah made it clear. Allah made it nice. Nah, but they take the soul and they cover it. The other one takes the soul and he protects it. He keeps it clean. Keeps it clean. He learns things. How to enhance. Some people... They cover the high ambition that Allah gives them. They cover it up with cheap thrills. Short-lived thrills. It lasts for 30 minutes. It lasts for 5 seconds. It lasts for 10 minutes. This is their life. They get a thrill that lasts for 5 minutes. That's all he wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that goal that you, you reach. High esteem affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given people the opportunity to have contentment. And to be self-sufficient, but they cover it up and switch it for addiction. They would rather be addicted to this and addicted to that. Addicted to things that they have to drink. Addicted to things they have to smoke. Addicted to things they have to sniff. Addicted to things they have to put in their arms. Addicted to things they have to listen to in their ears. They have to have it. Addicted to things they have to look with their eyes. And before that, Allah made them content, self-sufficient, not in need of any of that. Who's the Akhil? Who's the one that's intelligent? Who's the one that has a sound mind? So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam connected to this ayat. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Qad aflah man zakaha, wa qad khaba man dasaha." He is successful, the one that purifies it, and he loses. He's a loser, the one that harms it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say, "Allahumma ati nafsi." Taqwaha wa zakkiha Anta khayru man zakkaha Anta waliyuha wa mawlaha Oh Allah, give my soul its taqwa Give my soul its taqwa Wa zakkiha and purify it Anta khayru man zakka You are the best one to purify the soul Not the musicians Not the basketball players Not the football players Not the ashab dunya Not this They're not the ones that purify the soul And give it israha Anta khayru man zakkaha Anta waliyuha Wa mawlaha Well waliyuha is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is the one that protects it And takes care of it And also raises it And nurtures it Now I'm Raises your soul and nurtures it. Now, we have a darsana al yom. Fi had al ma'ana. And had a huwa ma'ana al aqal. Wa al mu'alif ba'da had a sayyid kur asha. Wa alana la akhuduhu bil ghadr. Wa natawakaf huna. Wa naktafi bi had al ghadr. Subhanaka la huma wa bi hamdak. A shalom la ilaha illa an. As that for the kuwa to go in it. I'm going to